Welcome. We're going to draw a dog today. I'm going to show you how I digitally draw a dog using Photoshop and my Wacom tablet. So we're going to start with a new document and you usually start with something about 4x6, 4x8. Here we'll do uh, 4x6 and we're going to set the resolution at 600 so we have enough resolution to work with, a lot of detail um, when this goes to print in a book. So because this is going to be printed, I'm going to work with CMYK and we will click create. So here we have our document and unlock that background and we'll just start with a regular white uh, canvas. So the first thing I'll do is I'm going to touch B to get to my brush. And we want to make sure that our brush settings are the way we want them. So you go to brush settings. You may already have it open here, um, but this is where you find it. So in the brush settings, you'll see that right now it is just one continuous line and the thickness is consistent. So what I want to do is I want to go to shape dynamics and turn that to pen pressure. And pen pressure will pick up the pressure from my Wacom tablet. So if I start out with a real light pressure, it will be real a uh, thin line. And as I press more, it will get thicker. Um, back up here to the brush shape, one thing I always do as well is take your spacing down as far as it'll go, which is usually 1%. Um, this just sets up the spacing. And you have quite a bit of control over this. If you wanted to draw a bunch of dots, you could but I like to have a line that is as smooth as possible here. Um, so you turn that on if it's not on and uh, take it all the way down to 1% so the line is real smooth and not bumpy. That's really all I change in here. Smoothing is um, already on, so I just leave that on, um, but it's setting the pen pressure and that spacing. That's it. Keep it pretty simple. There's a lot of settings and a lot of brushes you can download. Um, I don't feel the need to do any of those with the kind of work I do. All right, so with my left and right bracket keys, I can increase the size of the brush or decrease the size of the brush. Um, I always make sure that I am, um, my hardness is 100% when I draw. You can thin that out if you want to have a feather around the outside, but I keep it as hard as possible. That's the style that I draw in. And I will usually start just to sketch in um, maybe like a 30 or a 20 um, pixels. So we're on our brush. Now we just need to have a color. So with my white background, I'm going to do a new layer um, and then I'll choose my color to draw with. So on this layer, I'm just going to title this sketch. I always start out with a sketch. And for my sketch, I will usually do like a 60% a cyan. Um, sometimes I'll do a magenta if I'm doing multiple sketches. Um, but it's just a nice light color that I think works well. So for the sketch, we'll simply just start out. Um, sketching our dog. Everything I draw usually comes right from my head. Um, every now and then I'll have to look at something if I don't know how the shadows are falling on it. Um, and if I need a little bit more detail. With the Wacom tablet pen, you can flip it over and use your eraser. Um, I find it's easier just to toggle back and forth between B for brush and E for eraser. And then make sure we turn the hardness up on this. And if I want to make this a little more of an oval, I can just draw over it and erase it and then go back to sketching. So I'm not too particular, um, but I want to get a pretty decent drawing down of, of what I'm looking for here. I'm after kind of a floppy dog that looks fun. This is uh, a drawing for a children's book. 
that teaches them the alphabet. And this is D, of course, for dog. It probably could be P for puppy, too. Get the ears going here. Having some fun with the ears as they wag. I like to do things kind of lively with people so they seem a little bit more engaging to kids. You can do what you want with your eyes. This type of uh, style that I'm using right now, I usually have the eyes pretty far apart. A couple of my characters work that way, so I carry that into the, the little animals too. Dogs don't, well sometimes they do smile, but um, I like to have mine smiling if I can. You can see my sketches are pretty detailed because um, I know what I want it to look like and it helps when I do kind of the final the final inking of it with black lines to have something as accurate as possible. One thing that I'd like to do is um, if you touch R in Photoshop you can just touch R you'll go into this rotation and it will spin um, your whole drawing board here. You can still zoom in, you can still use all your other tools. Um, it's just a personal preference, but I tend to draw best when I can just move my hand this way. I'm right-handed and it's hard for me to draw this way. It almost feels like I'm drawing backwards. So this R lets me spin it all the way around and I can draw a clean circle this way. And then you can just reset your view here and you're right back to where you wanted to be. I'm going to use my lasso tool here to pull this whole thing down. So I want it to be a little bit longer the snout. And then we'll do that. I want the nose to be just a little bit wider too. Put a little highlight down there too. All right, this is looking pretty good. Start to put his body on here. Give him some big feet. Round everything just a little bit to make them seem smoother, softer. I like being able to erase nice and clean as soon as I make a mistake.
And uh, let's put a collar on him, give it a little bit of depth, or her, I guess. And while I certainly like where this is going, I feel like to make it a little bit cuter, the whole body could be a little bit smaller in proportion to the dog, the head. So I'm going to select that with the lasso tool, Command T, and I'm just going to, well actually I'll just use my Option key, and I'm going to put the center point right up here, and then it will reduce down to where I clicked with my Option up there. A bigger head tends to make him look a little bit cuter. You don't want to go too small. It's actually kind of funny looking. Somewhere in between there. I kind of like maybe that. There. I think that's pretty cute for right now. So we have everything we want. Let's, uh, I'm going to crop this just by hitting C. We'll leave a little bit of room around it, but we don't need to have the file any larger then we need it because that just takes up extra processing space. All right, so I guess one thing I haven't done is save yet. So, oops, we save this and I'll just go to the desktop right now. So I'm going to leave this in Photoshop and we'll just call this puppy sitting and Leave it as Photoshop, leave the layers in there. All right, so now we're going to go into our next step and we're going to label this outlines. And on the outlines, I'm going to choose a black. Now, when I go to print this in a book, uh, the books are printed four color process. So what I don't want to have, because I have some thinner lines in here, I don't want to have a built black, which if I just choose like a Photoshop black, like this, this black in Photoshop is all built, meaning it's made out of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. They do that, of course, because, well, maybe not, of course. They do that because a photograph of a person, um, you have built blacks in there, so there's all of these colors to give a much richer black. Uh, I found that that can lead to some registration problems when you illustrate for a printed piece and if this little line, the registration of these four colors is off a little bit, you might have a little bit of magenta or cyan hanging off there. So what I tend to do is just put 100% black in here. And then the only thing that prints there is black and it looks nice and clean in a printed book. Okay, so B back to brush. And this is where I want to vary my style a little bit. So I'm going to zoom in here. And I'm going to put my brush up to about maybe 50 here, um, 50 pixels. And now, over top of my sketch, I can start to fill it in. And when I do this, I want it to be somewhat um, random, so everything isn't perfect. So when I draw, I tend to push down lightly when I start. And then I'll expand on it a little bit, let up a little bit. A little bit heavier and lightly like that um, so that it has a little bit of character and it doesn't look so boring and perfect. Um, I'm not a huge fan of like drawing with like vector and illustration because I don't feel there's a lot of personality to it. Sometimes like this, you'll see the computer kind of bog out just a little bit. And that's okay, just be patient. So 
Sometimes it's hard to get your hand to slide around on this Wacom tablet, but you get used to it. Thick and thin, thick and thin. I kind of like how that's going. I really like this where it's thin here and then it gets thicker over here. It gives it a little bit of motion. We'll leave a little bit of a highlight on the top of the nose there. Fill the rest of this in. Sometimes just to give it a little more animation too, I won't complete these lines, let them um, just kind of sit out there, open like that. It gives it a little more character too. Okay. I always double check to make sure I'm on my outlines layer. I have inked a whole drawing that was kind of a lot of work on the sketches layer. And, uh, and then you have to go back. What I usually will do is instead of redoing it, I'll go up under uh, select color range and select the black and then delete everything else from the background once I have that selected. It's a little bit easier than going back and redrawing everything. Here I'm going to put, kind of simulate a drop shadow on here by making the top thicker, I'm sorry, the top thinner and the bottom thicker like that. Even these lines, I'll go thick and thin, thick and thin, just to give them a little bit of character. You get used to pressing down as you draw and letting up as you draw after you do it for a little while. I used to, back in the day, do some drawings with actual ink on a brush. And kind of like uh, Charles Schultz used to draw Snoopy and Peanuts that way. I don't know. Um, with a brush and you get kind of that thick and thin line. That's where this comes from. And it kind of gives it a cool feel. kind of interesting that we've all moved to the computer, but a lot of us artists are trying to make everything that we do on the computer look like it's done by hand, which I think is a kind of a paradox, but I'm no different and I think it looks better to draw something like this by hand, even though it is done digitally so we can do things fast and efficiently in this kind of modern age. can see I use the blue lines <clears throat> as much as I can, but sometimes as I go along I feel the need to correct them, or if I don't like them, they're off a little bit, and that's fine. I like this sometimes too, where the lines overlap. Sometimes I can go back in and add some of those, um, just to make it feel a little bit looser. Okay, so let's turn off our sketch layer, and now you have just your clean um, black and white drawing. And I think I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to save that. Now, the way I like to colorize my my objects for this book is where um, I'm using a textured drawing, uh, I'm sorry, textured color. And where it came from was I have this um, big, like almost two foot by three foot painting that I did a couple years ago. And this is all um, acrylic paint thin down with water and I use like bottles to watercolor it but do a line drawing of it. So if you zoom in here you can see on this, this is a ungessoed canvas, so it's just a raw canvas. And the, the paint acts kind of like watercolor and when you thin it down even though it is acrylic paint. So what I did is I took portions of this into Photoshop and I played around with it for a while and I came up with these shapes that allow me to use that texture. You can see the texture from the painting in here. Um, but I dropped everything except one color from them. And this is how I like to colorize a lot of my children's books. And I made up several different colors and made kind of a color palette. 
um, that I can use. So for this one, um, I'm going to select the, uh, the brown and I'll select all, select the brown layer, copy that with Command C, Command V to paste that, and then we'll just call this brown. If I could spell right, I could call it brown. All right, so here I have the brown layer, and I'm going to put this behind um, the outlines so I can kind of see where it goes, but I'm going to use this now to basically paint the whole dog. So I'm going to set this layer on multiply so that when I make copies of it, I'm just holding my option key down, as I make copies of it, they'll slightly overlap and I'll try to align them so that they kind of uh, hide the overlapping seams. And sometimes I'll put them, like when I put them down here, I will rotate them so they fit into there. And I'm okay again if some of this looks a little bit random and there's a little bit of overlapping because that's kind of what I want to do with the whole drawing style anyway. So you can see as I move through this, I'm just building up a whole bunch of layers of that brown and the edges are just feathering themselves over top of it. And that's how I'm building this layer of everything being feathered together. So there, I kind of like that. So I'm going to select all of these layers and I'm going to um, control click and I'm gonna merge all those layers together. So now they're just in one brown layer. I'll call this the brown texture. And I'll hit crop. Um, there is some of this that went off the page. So if I hit crop and then return, you'll see that it kind of shows me where it's going to crop all of that off. So I'll hit return again. I do have delete cropped pixels selected up here. So that deletes all those pixels. Now this is also just part of the style that I work in, but on this layer, I'm going to go with my eraser. And again, I have the hardness set all the way to 100. And I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to start erasing it. I like to look like it's, or I like it to look like someone just kind of came in with a brush again, um, mimicking that brush style. And they filled it in with kind of a brush, a paintbrush but the paint that they put in there has this kind of cool texture in it. So I like it to be somewhat smooth, but not perfect again. Perfect isn't really the style that I work with. I don't care for that. So we'll go around the whole exterior of this dog. Get rid of the nose here too. And just a little bit inside the mouth. You can see what that looks like. I'm just erasing part of this. I guess I could go down in here. And we'll go up around here. Again, just going for randomness. So it looks like it's hand drawn. Okay, so here I am going to leave the neck. Um, just because it's a smaller area, I'm not gonna put that white around the neck there. Oops, hit that one just a little bit. I'll leave that solid like that. But down here, we'll start it up again. I'll come down here. I think for these, what I'll do is I'm gonna put just a little bit of erased line on both sides of this. Then we'll continue this one up here. And 
Oh, you know, I don't think I have my eraser set to pen pressure. Now I do. Um, and let's make sure we have our spacing here as well. So I'm going to get rid of these two lines because you'll see now if I start with just a little bit of pressure and then heavier pressure, I can erase with the same thick and thin stroke that I had in my black and white line work. Let's put a little bit in here, kind of feather this out a little bit in here. Same thing, feather this just a little bit, start round that a little bit. I'll leave the bottoms of the solid brown there just to give it kind of a base, brown and act as kind of like a little bit of a shadow in the bottom where there's no white. Um, the middle area, I think I'll just leave all of that brown. Um, I'll come in here and just kind of loop out there. That'll be kind of the end of that brown. The white on the paws here acts a little bit like a highlight too on the top. So we'll take all this out. And then the inside there, I think we'll just leave that the way it is. Over here, we'll round this up. And as we come up, cut in just a little bit and give that kind of a highlight. And then do the same thing over here. I'm gonna round this just a little bit. And we'll round this just a little bit here. No real magic to how I'm doing this. I'm just doing it so that it looks the way I want it to. And I keep going around and around and around. Until I get something that I like. Alright, so I think that looks pretty good. Um, so, the last thing that I'll do with the brown here is I'm going to do L, move to my lasso tool. I can get rid of my outlines, and then I'll just zoom in here and take chunks of this out. Just delete it. Because of the random pattern I have built into my textured background here, there is absolutely no way to select and delete this. So you just do it by hand like this. Doesn't take that long. Get rid of the area behind the collar here. I'm using the lasso just kind of full strength. No, no feather on it, um, nothing special. Just so I grab a clean line of pixels. You'll get used to this. The, the Wacom tablet actually makes it a lot easier to draw a line like this. And not that you can't do this with a mouse, but you really can't do this with a mouse, not as fast. And you certainly can't do the pen pressure without the Wacom tablet. So let's see, what do I have here? I want to get rid of this here. And I think that should be good. Hit save. Yeah, I like that. So now, depending on how, oops, I forgot a chunk up here, <coughs> excuse me, um, depending on how dark you want your dog, and by the way, you can probably see your dog can be any color, um, but depending on how dark you want your dog, you can go to the brown texture layer and just reduce the opacity. So it could be a little bit lighter, but you'd still keep that texture in there. 
Uh, I kind of I kind of like just 100. I think that's fine for me. Um, okay, so let's save again, and then let's go to uh, uh, back to our color over here, and let's choose like this gold right here. Go to the gold layer, select all. Oops, I think I might have just accidentally hit Command Q. Okay, I'm back. That happens sometimes. I'm in front of the camera and I forget my quick keys or my fingers fumble. Okay, so we're on our gold layer. We'll select all, Command C to copy, and Command V to paste. And what you'll notice here is that this entire piece, let me turn off the brown layer here, this entire piece will fit right over top of the the entire necklace. I like to look at the little uh, kind of pieces inside of here, the contrasting pieces, and put some interesting pieces over this when I can. And I may even rotate it just a little bit to make it look a little more interesting. I like all these lines in here. So I think I'll put some of those in the collar. Okay, so on this layer, Let's just call this gold, and to be a stickler about it, gold texture. And then let's go in here and do the same thing with our erase. I think I'll do the same thing here. I'll just erase on the top to kind of create a highlight, and then I won't on the bottom. I won't put the white on the bottom. But I will come in here and let me reduce this down just a little bit. And do a little bit of a highlight right on the top of this little medallion here. There, I like that. Okay, let's hide this. And then another way to do this too when you have a smaller piece is to outline the part you want to keep. And then if you want, you can go up here to inverse, um, command shift I, and let me zoom out here. That will now make your selection the inverse of what you had there. And on this gold layer, type delete, and all that will go away. So now, as I open these up, I have my initial sketch. I went from the sketch and added the outlines, <clears throat> added the brown, and added the gold. And there is our cute little playful puppy. Um, I have played around with every now and then um, doing catch lights and sometimes I like them sometimes I don't and catch lights tend to give a little bit of life to things. Um, see what they look like here. Oops. Uh, Catch lights in front of my eyes. There we go. Maybe it looks a little bit livelier. You can do catch lights, catch lights like that. Um, we could also follow the nose a little bit. If we wanted to go thick and thin to thick. That's cute too. Either one, I guess, is okay. Oh, see, now I drew those over top of my outlines. I do that every now and then. Um, I kind of like them just without them. So, your choice, of course. So, that is it. Thank you for following along. Um, windhillbooks.com is where I sell all of our, our books. And this is a children's book. Um, I'll show the picture of it that is forthcoming, um, which it's uh, basically how to letters and words with a couple of my characters. And for this, I have done, each book I think has about 150 illustrations like this. So I'll be putting more up um, on, I'll be drawing more like this live for the book, um, just kind of showing you how I do it. All right, thank you. Welcome. 
All the drawings I do are from children's books that I write and illustrate. Some are picture books, some are chapter books. Uh, my wife also writes some books a little bit longer for middle grade that I illustrate for her. As you can see, we do quite a few books. We have quite a few books and we add several each year. So we're always adding something new um, for our customers. You can buy our books at our website, windhillbooks.com. I'll put a link below in the description. And you can also buy them at barnesandnoble.com and amazon.com. Thank you.